Hey, crypto friends, for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Garrett and welcome to Altcoin Radar. Today, we are going to be taking a look at the Jupiter charts and we're going to see where it might be headed and we will cover both bullish and bearish scenarios as well, just to simply cover all of the possibilities. Now, for those of you who love trading crypto and would like to try out the same exchange that I use on a daily basis, feel free to go ahead and try out the Blowfin exchange with the link in the video description down below this video. Now, the big reason why I absolutely love using this exchange is because they allow anybody from anywhere to be able to sign up and trade crypto futures. So if you're from the United States like I am and you want to trade crypto futures, you can do it right here on the Blowfin Exchange. All right, guys, so we are going to take a look at Jupiter today and see what's going on and see what the price is looking at and see what price action is looking like on the overall macro charts. All right. So as we all know, um, Jupiter has become a major player in the Solana ecosystem. All right. Uh, this thing has literally taken off by storm and has made some insane, absolutely awesome gains. All right. But we have been in a downtrend and we did recently end up coming out of it as well. Now, what's interesting about Jupiter is, is obviously it is a Solana based ecosystem project. So it's going to follow a lot of the same movements that Solana is, that Solana is moving as well. All right. Obviously, when Solana is going up and more and more people are using Solana DEXs and Solana DeFi products, more and more liquidity is going to be coming into Jupiter. So therefore, Jupiter's price is going to rise as well. All right. So when we're taking a look at Jupiter's price right now, um, here's the, here's what I currently see. All right. Um, obviously, we had this big, big downslope that we had way, way back here, and that was obviously not cool. And then we ended up coming back and creating a rising wedge right up in here, and we ended up creating this high um, in this wedge right here at around one dollar and thirty one cents. All right. But then we started to drop again at down to another big leg down and we had this next big support level down here or this range big range support level down here of uh, right around 63 cents and we ended up going back upwards and we are starting to move upwards in a good positive fashion which is awesome to see all right so what i currently see happening here just by looking at the macro charts is obviously in a bull case scenario here's what we need to see happening okay obviously we have got some midterm um, support levels right in here. And let's see here, we've got some more right, we've got, I mean, this can be technically be considered as a midterm support area as well. So realistically, what I see happening here in a bull scenario, obviously, we are currently testing this resistance here up at $1.18. We end, we did end up hitting it just yesterday, but we ended up rejecting it immediately and started coming back down. And we came back down right to this high right up in here from a few days ago, all right? As you guys can clearly see, that's kind of where that daily candle closed right in here, all right? And then this current daily candle, we ended up coming back up, and as you can clearly see, there is still some good positive momentum going on as well. Now, if this positive momentum does continue to keep going on, and let's say either the rest of today or tomorrow's daily candle opens up and we end up pushing right through this, uh, right through this resistance area, then this next area that we need to be getting up to up here is $1.31. And this is that big key area of resistance that we want to be looking at here uh, to be able to gain enough momentum for and cross. All right. But I assume there's going to be all kinds of resistance at this level. So I assume that once we get up to this $1.31 level, we'll probably end up hitting it and we'll probably end up coming back down to consolidate down to right around our old resistance level now support down at $1.18 before hopefully gaining mo enough momentum to go upwards again, all right? The overall idea here that we wanna do is obviously with this move to the downside, once we get up to resistance here and come back down to consolidate is to create a higher low right in here, all right? Before gaining momentum to go back up higher to the upside and then kind of repeat the whole process over and over again. And that's typically what we want to see in a healthy bullish move. All right. So realistically, in a bullish scenario, that's typically what I, you know, see happening here. Uh, realistically, though, we need to get to this $1.31 level to be able for me personally to start feeling incredibly bullish on this one once again, and to start feeling like we've got a good shot at getting up to this $1.84 level once again. All right. And the simple reason why is because this is kind of the big key level, the big high that we hit after our first big downslope that we had. All right. Now, Obviously, anything can happen in crypto. We all know that. And there could be a potential 
bearish side to this as well. All right. Now I like to cover both bullish and bearish scenarios because this is real life and anything can happen. And, you know, anybody who's been in crypto for quite a while knows that, you know, anything can happen and anything does happen on a regular basis. I mean, shit happens like crazy in this market. So in a, bull, in a bearish case scenario, what I could see happening here is let's say we end up not being able to gain enough momentum to cross this um, this resistance area here of one dollar and eighteen cents. All right, we'll probably end up coming back down, and we'll probably end up coming back down down to uh, this midterm support area right in here, where we kind of hung out and where we closed for one, two, three, four, pretty much three days in a row, and we'll probably end up bouncing from there a little bit and kind of ranging within this area for a little bit before end up coming back down to retest the support area of one or sorry eighty six cents right around in there. All right. Now, if that does end up happening, obviously it's going to depend on how the overall market is moving at the time that we do hit that level. But if there is enough momentum, then obviously we'll bounce off of it and start going back upwards to the upside. If there is not enough momentum here, we'll end up closing below it and starting to head back down to this next bigger layer of support down here of 63 cents. Now, realistically, unless something major happens in the crypto market to where people start dumping like crazy again, I don't foresee us going any lower than the 63 level right here. But as we all know, anything can happen in crypto and we have all seen crazy wild stuff happen in the crypto market before. So it's definitely not out of the question. And I do like to cover both, you know, scenarios like that. So it is an option and I just want to let you know about it. All right. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the total three chart to see the overall um, movement of what altcoins are currently doing right now in general, as you guys can clearly see, we're kind of ranging here between the 620 billion area and this new $663 billion area. And we've kind of, I mean, obviously we've got some decent, you know, resistance right up here, but we need to cross this. And once we get up to the $720 billion area, that's personally when I'm going to start feeling extremely bullish that we have got enough momentum to finally get up to and, and a chance to potentially pass this big 789 billion dollar area because this is kind of the big all-time cycle high that we're currently dealing with right now and that's kind of the level that we realistically need to get up to to be able to start feeling bullish again that we are going to have another gigantic leg to the upside all right so guys, uh, before I go ahead and wrap this one up, uh, if you enjoyed this one and got some decent value out of it, please make sure to go ahead and, and subscribe to the channel, hit the like button below the video, and leave me a comment below on your personal thoughts on where you think the price of Jupiter is going to go here in the short to midterm. And with that said, for those of you guys who stuck around and watched this entire video throughout the whole thing, thank you guys very much. I appreciate all of you very much, and I hope to see all of you in my future videos.